Hey, Math 6, Mrs. Spence here. We are looking at another week working with inequalities. This time we are going to graph inequalities on a number line as well as write the inequality from the graph. So kind of doing the reverse process here. All right, and I gave you a sneak peek last week at graphing inequalities on a number line, but let's look at them a little bit more in depth. Okay, so the thing about graphing number lines, when you're working with an equation, you are just working with something that is equal to it and nothing else. For example, if I say that x equals 3, x can only be 3. So when you graph that, and we don't typically graph equations, but you can, we would say, all right, what number on this number line represents this equation x equals 3? And we know that it's right here. We would say, yes, three is right there. And we'd say, okay, put a pin in it right there. All right. And we would color it in. We say, yes, that is three on a number line. And that is correct. So this is something that we often forget once we start graphing inequalities. We forget how to graph just a plain equation. But it would just be a solid colored in dot right on the number. All right, so when we're graphing inequalities, there are two things that we need to look at. The circle that it uses and the shading. All right, so we're gonna start with the circles. We've already seen one application of when we use a solid colored in circle, and that's when we're talking about equals. Anything that equals, so an equation would be, but also the pieces of inequalities that contain an equal sign. For instance, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. All right, so all three of these would get a colored in circle because you were saying, hey, this number is included as a possible solution, whether it's an equation or it's an inequality, because it is also equal to three. Any number greater than three, but also equal to three, or any number less than three or equal to three. So it gets the colored in closed circles, what we call it closed. All right, in comparison, if we have an open circle, that's only talking about the less than or greater than symbols. So it's saying any number, let's say X is less than two. If we're at the two, it's not gonna include the two, but it's any number less than the two. So it won't include the two, so it gets an open circle. I kind of talk about um, how it's zeroing in on the number, but not the number itself, so we don't get to shade it in. So close, but not included. All right, and then you talk about the shading. So needing to find the shading, is just saying, okay, when it's a equation, it is that number and only that number. But when it's an inequality, you need to show all the possible solutions that it can be without having to write in every single number that it could be like I showed you last week. So when we're looking at this example, there are two ways to do it. You can either just think about, I'm going to shade all the numbers it could possibly be, or I'm going to show you a little trick called the alligator's tail. All right, so let's look at this one. X is less than or equal to three. So we have the three and any number less than three. So you think about what's a possible solution that would be less than three. Well, we know two would be less than three and we know that one would be less than three and zero would be less than three and negative two would be less than three. So look at how it's all going this direction on a number line. So we would shade where the numbers are included. So one would be included, zero would be included, and all the negatives would be included. What would not be included is any number, whoops, I need to go to the three, bigger than three, like four, five, six, ten, 10, 100, 1,000 examples, okay? So including possible solutions, it's just analyzing it and shading any possible solution. All right, no trick to it. Now, when I talk about the alligator tail, so when we learned in elementary school that the alligator wants to eat the bigger number, we didn't talk about inequalities as possible solutions or solution sets to inequalities. So what I say with the alligator's tail is if you look like this is the mouth with the teeth here, okay, the tail would be going the opposite direction of the mouth, right? 
And so you would shade in the direction of that's opposite of its mouth or shade the tail. The other thing you can see is when you shade, for example, this is the X is less than or equal to three. When you shade this in and you include the arrow on it, look at how it's the same symbol used as the inequality symbol going the same direction. So you can see that even with this tail, it looks like the less than symbol that we used for the mouth. Okay, um, let's do another example down here. And I'm going to give you, let's say that x is greater than three. Okay. So we would want to shade and I'm actually going to use a dot here, shade the three and it's going to be, oh, that's way too big. So here, I'm just going to fix it by adding the equal to part. Okay. So we have a closed in circle on the three and we want to show any number bigger than three. So you can either do it with shading, thinking, okay, four is bigger, five is bigger, six is bigger, a hundred is bigger. I'm going to be going this way. Or you can think about the alligator tail. So if we have an open mouth this way, the tail would be going that way. So we would shade this direction. And then we can also check and see that the end of the line is the same as the greater than symbol than it was. Okay, so let's take a few notes here. You have these notes that you can um, follow along and fill in. They're going to go in to that onto the form that you have in your packet. <clears throat> so let's just take a few notes. So when you are writing inequalities, so this is going backwards. We're going to write the inequalities from the graphs that you've been given. So kind of reverse that process. Over here, we were drawing the graph from the inequality. Now we're going to be writing the inequality from the graph. Here are the steps that you need. So you first got to look at, like we did over here, you got to look at the circle. So what kind of circle did they give us? And that will tell us whether or not we are going to have an equals to part included. Okay. So then the second thing we're going to do is look at the shading. Okay, so we need to look at the direction of the arrow or the shading. All right, the second step is the variable goes on the left. Always put the variable on the left. And that's something that I need to reiterate about that little trick with the alligator tail. That only works when the variable's on the left. It would not work if the variable was on the right because you'd have the opposite um, situation. So let's look at that really quickly. All right. So for instance, this X is greater than or equal to three. What if I had the three on the left and the X on the right, still going to make the alligator eat the X because it's what is larger. But if I had it that way, the alligator's tail would be pointing the wrong direction. And we've already decided that it's supposed to go this way. So this trick only works if the variable is on the left. So if you have a situation where it's written like this, you can just flip it around if you like to use that alligator trick. Just make sure that the alligator is eating the same thing once you flip it, the X, okay? All right, so back over to your notes. Write your inequality. Um, you're going to check it by just picking a point like we did when we were shading. So check it by picking a point and seeing if it makes a true statement. So it's like the substitution that we did last week. All right, so you're going to pick a point along the shading or along the line, the arrow. And you're going to be able to plug it in. And this, again, is just for the check. Plug it in. And if it makes a true statement, you wrote the inequality correctly. It's correct if it's true. Makes a true statement. 
All right, so let's look at these. We're first just going to decide what inequality symbol it gets. And the inequality symbol will be determined by the shading and also by the circles themselves. Okay, so the first two here on top, we know are going to have an equal to part because they're colored in. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. And now we need to see, okay, if the arrow is going this direction and the tail ends up being like this, then we know we have the greater than or equal to symbol. All right, that's with the trick. Now, if you're looking at this, as we go up in numbers, our numbers are getting greater. So as we go along the shaded line, our numbers are getting greater. So that would be the greater than symbol. Okay, so this is going the opposite direction. So we know it's gonna be the less than or equal to symbol, but let's check it. First, the alligator tail trick. Okay, it is making a less than symbol. And as we go along the line here, our numbers are getting smaller or less than. So yes, that would be the less than symbol. This is not gonna have an equals part, either one of these, because there's not a full shading in there. So this one is going this direction. That's gonna be our less than symbol. And as the numbers go, they get less than. And then the opposite, we have the alligator tail with a greater than symbol. And as we go along the line, it is getting larger. The numbers are getting larger. Okay, so let's practice this. We have some examples here. And we need to, the directions say, write the inequality from the line that they gave us. Okay, so we have an open circle. That's the first thing we need to look at. We're not gonna have an equal to part of it. The number is negative five. We're gonna just use any letter. I'm gonna use X. I'm gonna put it on the left so that our alligator trick works. And we have the number negative five. All right, so now the only thing we need to do is fill it in with the proper symbol. Alligator trick that way. But if we look at our numbers going from negative five following the line, we are getting larger. Our numbers are greater than its starting point of negative five. All right, let's look at the second one. I'm gonna use the same letter X. My number is one. It's closed in, so I know it's gonna have an equal to part. So my numbers are getting larger as we go. So I need to say that my solutions, all of my possible solutions will have to get larger than my starting point of one. So that's this way. And then if I wanted to use the hack or the trick, we went the correct direction. All right, let's look at this one. X on the left, my number, my starting point is three and all of my possible solutions are getting smaller than three. So that's gonna be a less than it is closed in, so it gets the or equal to part. And we have our solutions are less than or equal to three. All right, this one, the starting point is four. X on the left, no equals to part. From our starting point, the possible solutions are getting larger, so our solutions need to be larger than four no equals to part and it is x is greater than four all right starting point is zero on this one it is closed in closed circle from our starting point all the solutions have to be less than the zero so zero is the largest number. All possible solutions, which are what we shade, we shade all possible solutions are less than that zero. So it's gonna be less than or equal to. And last one, starting point of negative four, X on the left, open circle. All of my possible solutions that are shaded are less than that starting point. So I'm going to turn my back on possible solutions and eat the largest number, which is negative four. No equals to part. And we have the less than symbol that we shade.
All right, I hope that helps and I hope you have fun practicing these graphings. I know I love graphing inequalities and you will learn in algebra how we are gonna extend graphing inequalities when we start dealing with more than one variable.